so I, what I wanted to do was to give everybody sort of common imagery for the river and the communities along it. And yeah. um, the first two, the, the more desolate wastelands ones, which are very similar to the maps we've been using all along, we're leaving those out of the discussion for now. Um, mm -hmm. The other ones, the river ones, um, the the little town is sort of just an example of the dozens of little towns along the river. And the entire river is not lined by a road like you see in the one picture, but around fairly dense human habitation, it is. Um, mm -hmm. And so then when you get to that really fancy one with all the cool architecture and stuff, that would be the fanciest part of the community that Fareth comes from. Which may be a little more built up than we were imagining, but let's just say that's the, 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 the most fancy part. Um, I also have yeah. a map of what I presume, what I think of as the place where we first, well, where chronologically Fareth started. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the um, so that I I have that, but I haven't put that up yet because I don't know if we'll ever get near it in play, let alone this session. Um, but the but you should know I you know at least I have it, um, and it would be the sort of fantasy map of the place where that cool harbor is. Um. So anyway, that's just what I did was put up some pictures to give you guys an idea of what it's like along that river. And if you travel far enough that you would eventually hit that spot that Ferreth is from. I think I reversed the river when we talked. I was saying that to go, I, I think in one of the previous sessions, I made a snap decision about which way the river was flowing. And then I realized that was stupid. And so the way I, uh, I, for some reason, I'm imagining the river to be north of where we are. I don't know why. Well, I don't I know about I don't know about compass directions. Um, but I, I just thought that the river, oh, I, unless you did that, and I remember that I kind of uh, stopped and thought, wait, what? Right. Because well, before that, I always yeah. thought that Ithasha's uh, place would be. Up river from right. the city. Right. Well, I, I agree. And so, effectively, where your characters are standing now is upriver from the city. Mm. So, that that's let's just pretend I said that and we'll carry on because it didn't matter much. Geography as a DM is really painful. We're going to play just a little while. I don't see. There are yeah. a couple of We're things to resolve. Going to... Let's just rest. That's because right. uh, Ithasha needs a solid amount of rest to be yes. even functional. Well, that's, I think, what, what we need to uh, we need to establish some things before that. Um, so here's what um, I recall. Uh, I think, and we probably don't need to do this in detail, um, is that we have a uh, tense confrontation between Fareth and Ithasha. Um, and there is, and I think Fareth also made an appeal. He tried to convince Athasha, look, let's just take this stuff to this woman uh, who he thinks will handle this competently. Um, and Ithasha is at this time not, not very, uh, You know, not not very interested in that idea. Um, and then we also have Vefselk and Alknev who have been effectively, uh, you know, liberated in terms of you know what what Vefselk was thinking anyway. And then um, they, you know, and they they are traversing the the landscape now. Given what we know, um, it only makes perfect sense that if they're going in a direction which is neither back to the Jackal clan or tribe and is not 
into the haunted areas where you guys found the basilisks, that there's only one tribe that they could run into next. They are all over the place. There's only one place you guys could be. There's only one reasonable interpretation of what group of dusters you would actually encounter next. And um, that's why I have those first two maps. Um, okay. So the, uh, the, the, the map that I put up first uh, with all those cool, that cool canyon and struts between things and stuff like that. If you look at the second map, which has all of these sort of pillars and hills and hillocks and things. Yeah. Okay. Look at the top of that second map and you'll see this kind of wiggly, canyony, ditchy looking thing. And it's really boring on that map. Right? Well, yeah. take the first map and put make that that same place and make it a lot less boring. Right. Okay, yeah. Cool. Right. So um so it's kind of this montage map. And so the um and then if you look at that second map, I was pleased to see because they don't come from the same source. I was pleased to see more of those weird little bumps, which are duster dwellings. They're not dwellings in the sense of a human house. They are, however, perfectly good shelters in snake form. Um, the big ones probably even in drake form. But the important point is that they have they the they also have uh, uh, you know, holes. Some of them have holes that you go into to the underground areas. Even better, some of them house a lot of um, resources and materials that you go up there, you go into human form, pull out the poles, put out, pull out the cloths and the, you know, the lizard skin. And in, you know, given 10 dusters and 20 minutes, bam, you have a tent city. Right. So that's, you know, that that's the way I, I see this looking. So um, does that make sense, Sam? Kind of like your whole yeah. setup okay. there? Because that, unless you really, really want to, you can tell me, are you going to try to avoid any communities and get really far away? Or are you going to sort of bite the bullet and say, well, we're in this travel territory. We might as well, you know, be be guests. Yeah, I think uh, that's something we want to tell, you know, tell her stories and uh -huh. then pass, pass through, you know. Well, okay. Pretty, pretty out of it or something. Let's take a look then at Vefselk and Akmev, um, who have come to the land um, inhabited primarily by the people of the ant. Um, and the important detail is that in 30 seconds, um, Vefselk will be fully aware that this is where Ithasha came from. I mean, the, right. the tribal, um, you know, the communication about what tribe you come from is so explicit that, you know, you can say, oh, this is where she's from. Um, and so that's pretty clear right away. So you know that, you know, these people probably know Ithasha. Um, and you, you may be looking at, you know, members of her family, members of her, you know, her community. Um, so that's the first consideration that I suspect would be relevant for Beth Selk. Um, and then the question becomes just what is she going to, you know, share? Um, well, let's clarify some things about the place where you are. Um, I think that a nice, um, a nice indicator of the culture and everything would be actually seeing the the tribal you know, the, the the people emerging from those little you know holes um, and and uh, putting on their clothes as they transform into human um, and then from a bunch of weird little semi-natural structures 
from which snakes are wriggling out, all of a sudden you have a bunch of, you know, appropriately dressed, you know, a lot of skin showing, but appropriately dressed tribes people pulling out structures and, you know, low tech, but pretty cool, you know, lizard hide. And, you know, then all of a sudden this rock formation, which was just sitting there, turns out to be the central pillar of what is effectively, you know, a building. Um, and, right. yes. uh, and, and that's a kind of appearing in spots all over that map. So that Ooh. in the period of, you know, 45 minutes, the whole thing, I mean, there's practically like, you know, roads, I mean, in what looks like, you know, organized arrangement of, you know, of things now of course you know what what's notably missing are anything that you would call houses they don't need houses um but the preparation of food the um the meeting you know of different individuals um for various social purposes um the you know a, a wide variety of other things you know tasks that need to be handled, the return of hunters who've been out all day, um, all sorts of things of that kind. Now, how many people are we talking about? According to the Duster's book, Desert Duster tribes are actually very small, but I thought they were kind of ridiculous in their in their estimation of, you know, a dozen people. You don't call a dozen people a tribe. That makes no sense. Yeah. No. So, yeah, it's, the, and so therefore it makes a lot more sense mm -hmm. to be talking about at least a couple of hundred, you know, individuals are involved. Right. Doesn't mean they all live in this exact spot, but upon people arriving and stuff like that, and counting elders and children, we're moving into you know toward a couple two hundred people probably. So, right. um, and maybe not all here in this spot all at once. But so uh, I imagine I don't really need to play up. I think the complications. Um, if you want to just start with Veselk and Akhmev already having moved, you know, uh, already having arrived and, and have basically been probably uh, active or at least, you know, communicating with people of similar profession, which would be the, the hunters, mm -hmm. um, that's probably fair. Um, it would be dumb. Yeah. Yeah. It would be dumb to think that the two of you didn't shoot something along the way. Right. Obviously. Right. And so, you know, providing a nice fat lizard or something like that seems perfectly reasonable. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, that, that kind of thing. Um, well, another thing you'll notice is that unlike a human habitation, um, the need for running water is minimal. If there's, an, if there's underground water here, that's fine for them. And they're almost okay. certainly, there's almost certainly running underground water in this area, and they don't need, you know, uh, a, a, the a human habitation would absolutely need open running water. Right. They, they don't. So um, that's my my take on on your situation. Um, okay. Uh, now. Yeah, I think. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, go on, go on. Well, only that you would be socializing, word would be passed around so that very reasonably within a few hours, anybody who has reason to know knows that the two of you are here. Right. And it's, you probably don't need, you're, this isn't a big deal. You know, traveling hunters from elsewhere, it's not like you have to go be presented to the chief and stuff like that. Um, I don't really, right. I don't really see it as quite that significant um yeah and i think if it's clear that this is athasha's tribe i don't think that self would be as forthcoming with information i was about, kind like, of I don't, wondering about that part yeah i'm just realizing that like if it's like pretty evident i don't think she wants a whole like you know they all suddenly grab their spears and they're like where's athasha so i think <laughs> yeah you kind of been through that yeah, once maybe, already <laughs> yeah 